Welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video, we're going to take a look at the turn counter that I made for the Orc Idol. If you haven't seen the Idol, uh, you should go back. There's a playlist on my channel that shows all of the videos to date in this project for this Orc display board. Uh, and I think I came up with a fairly creative way to count the turns. Uh, that was something that was under contemplation before. And um, also, I tried to get a little fancy with the actual turning of the dial. So. Um, I think you might be interested in that, and uh, we should probably go take a look at it. So here you see the um, I temporarily put the idol on this uh, platform. This platform is uh, three layers, basically. Uh, the in-between layer, the sandwich layer, is the turn counter itself. And it occurred to me, somebody warned me about using, you know, bones and skulls, and I thought that was very astute. And then another viewer mentioned um, using uh, day and night, right? The phases of the moon and the, and the sun. And not that the sun has phases, but you get the idea. And it occurred to me, I have a bunch of these uh, goblin bits um, from back in the day, actually. And um, they have a lot of moons on them. So what I decided to do was to make the turn counter be comprised of moons. And the moons are getting larger as the turns increase. So we have uh, the first turn is our little tiny moon, and then the second turn is this sort of very slightly, uh, but it's where the you know two crosses are. It seems like a little bit more, and then our third moon is the uh, uh, the shield, which is a little bit larger still, and then um, we have this icon. Uh, here for turn four, and then um, this moon uh, for turn five, and then this moon, which is the largest uh, moon here, and that becomes uh, turn six. And I thought, if I don't say, you know, I don't often praise myself, but I thought, that's a nice little system. It, it feels natural, um, and you could see them possibly arranging some kind of I don't know, palisade around the idol of a sort. Um, but um, I thought it was uh, dressy enough, but also easy enough to understand, say, for your opponents across the way as well. Uh, so that was what I decided on for the um, turn counters. And um, let me um, pull the idol off, and then we'll take a look at the uh, actual turn counter mechanics. So at the moment, at the moment, this piece is just resting here. This will be glued down onto the um, the pedestal here, which is actually, you may recognize, this is a miniature base. Um, and I've left it off so that I could um, continue manipulating things without having this locked down. Uh, but this will get locked down, and it forms a sort of top plate to the turn counter uh, itself, and uh, that will kind of hold it from ever, you know, skipping out of the way and getting, uh, you know, discombobulated. So let's see if I can get my hand in here, but not get my hand in the front of either camera. How's that? So the the uh, popsicle popsicle stick, the toothpick, is currently holding the place of where the turn uh, indicator will be, and as uh oh, I got this all propped up here. As you turn the turn counter, it snaps into place for each of the turns. And I really wanted that to happen. I feel like a lot of turn counters, you know, they're all kind of soft and squishy and they don't, you know, I wanted something that felt like snap. Now we're on turn five or whatever. Um, that actually made things a little challenging because it meant that I had to line up those snaps to the uh, turn indicators, the turn markers, I should say. And that really surprised me a little bit. Um, and I'll show you underneath here in a second. Um, if you look, though, this one is little bit off um, and in fact others were off more and as you look on this piece you'll see numerous drill holes and uh, there was some uh, refining of the position of these uh, as the uh, development process continued but um, now they're all snapped uh, pretty much right to the center except for that one and I'm gonna leave it 
I've fiddled with this an awful lot as it is. Um, the thing that had to happen was to install magnets all the way around it and the magnets become the stops for the turns so it you know it has to line up as a as a radii going out to these and for some reason i don't know when i did it it didn't quite line up right i also learned actually i started putting these in you'll see there's a missing one there that um i had to have them equally spaced you probably go duh at this point but uh, because otherwise the magnets on top uh, wouldn't line up properly it actually would line up and it would hold down at different spots but it wouldn't hold properly for all spots because the magnets were not equidistant so i had to go back through respace these um, install uh, some of them back in and whoops and you may notice um, some of the work uh, this uh, milliput stuff here uh, this was the uh, this plastic is so thin uh, that the magnets inserted in this side are really flush right with the surface. So what I did is I built up a little milliput just above that layer just so I could put in some lines that would tie it into the um, rest of the uh, uh, you know rest of the texture of the piece. Now I also have to admit that I put in a couple of the magnets upside down. That was um, not <laughs> not helpful in getting it done. Um, so I had to pull a couple of the magnets out and flip them around. Um, that would have been easily solved if I had just been using a stack of magnets to double check as I went around. Um, I thought I was checking and uh, I think there were two of them that were flipped up probably when I was putting them in because they're so close together. They, you know, when I go to press this one in, it might want to hop out and f join with the, the its partner. So um, that, process probably caused um, two of them to flip over so I had to dig those out flip those back over and and the other sort of challenge with this was keeping it looking oh that's me stay out of the frame Mike um, was was keeping this looking like rough lumber slapped together kind of orcish style goblin style but doing that means that it has an uneven passing so you know because it's irregularly shaped as it turns it you know it protrudes whoa this is a little tricky here because i've got this display table here propped up a little gingerly um, but you know here it's sticking out really far and you know here now you know this is uh, all exposed and in fact you can see when it goes to turn six um, there is a magnet here that's exposed and um, vice versa when I go I think when I go back all the way around I think there's one or two magnets yeah that are showing on that side so they'll have to get the same treatment as the uh uh, as the top magnets and get covered up. One of the things I was concerned about was that the texture of the wood would be too aggressive to turn smoothly. And uh, so I, I, you know, I smoothed this out and um, actually it slides pretty well. Here's an odd observation. I'm probably going in a little too far here now at this point, but when it turns, um, see if we can see that in the close cam a little bit better. When it, it turns, it actually, see that? It actually hops up now what's weird is that all the magnets are right so it's not it's not like there's reversed magnets it has to do with coming between the two magnets and somehow I don't know maybe they're pulling on it or you know equally and that's causing it to try to float or it's I don't know it's a strange phenomenon um, when I first saw that I thought oh god I missed another magnet but nope nope they're all right um, so anyway when I put the top plate on and you know glue that in place that will hold this rigid so it won't uh, pop up and down as it gets turned so that's how I did the turn counter um, the last con uh, sort of Thing to do is to put an actual turn indicator on there now that also it causes that same problem of it's uneven and so as it rotates right like right now there's a lot of space over here but this will be fixed and as it comes around well let's just pretend this is rotating instead right as it comes around now it has very little space um, on the deck compared to this top plate so i have to mount something um, pretty um you know 
far outside and I can adjust um, how I lay this down to try to provide the maximum amount of free space for rotation. I think um, it's something like that maybe it's going to give me the most space but it's one of those other small things because everything's irregular as it turns it's all of a sudden it's close to something and far away from others but I'm going to put a little I'm thinking right now a little piece of lumber here and then scatter a few other pieces of lumber around like they were left over from the construction or whatever uh, maybe throw a, a weapon or two laying on the ground as well and then it will mask this odd thing sticking out here and just make it look like it was part of you know all the other detritus that was left behind after the construction so that gives you a uh, look at the turn counter system I set up uh, for the idol. So that gives you a look at the orc idol and its turn counter and um, of course it's not entirely finished right because I might put a little a couple bits on it here and there uh, but um, getting that all to snap into place and get that all working was uh, a trick and uh, felt pretty good about it, how it operates now so I'm gonna take that as a victory. Um, and if you have questions or comments, uh, leave them down below. I will do my best to uh, get back to you. I actually kind of got, I got caught up on comments again. I had, that's only the second time ever that I was actually caught up. I'm behind now because I didn't check in a while, but um, I'm gonna make my best effort to try to stay on top of those. And if you are a new visitor to the channel, I just want to say welcome. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you found uh, something here interesting and in the menagerie of videos that I have done in the past. And if you're interested, um, I'm always uh, welcoming you to uh, join Patreon and become a supporter of mine. Um, actually, I've been putting up some new content and uh, some of it Patreon only, patron only. But I also just did a couple reviews of the painted finishes products from plaid i think it's called pronounced plaid um, in their folk art paint series they sent me a few samples uh, one of them was for uh, rust effects and one of them was for moss effects and i took those broke them all down um, analyzed what they what works for them and what doesn't at the miniature scale and then modified them to see if i could improve the effects that they produced so uh, if you are interested in rust, rust or moss, uh, then um, you might want to uh, check it out and see what you think. Um, they should be very close to the top of the uh, posts, uh, the feed, if you will, um, as of the day I'm shooting this. So uh, I might have to organize some things down the road and see if I can keep them from disappearing into the, the way back hole that is the Patreon feed um, and I've been talking to Patreon about that I'm like mm, what, do you, what do you guys think about fixing that so I can keep things closer to the top they're working on it we're in communication anyway um, thank you for joining me I said thank you before but I'll say it again because I do appreciate it and uh, stay tuned because I have more orc developments coming up on the channel and hopefully you will come back to check out those videos because you know that I will be back soon with another Terranscapes video. Oh, I didn't mention that. Okay. Elevator. Oh, start a fresh, start a fresh one.